Hi everyone and welcome to week two of Grow Indigo with Praxis Fiber Workshop. Very hot, steamy week we're having this week, so that is going to influence our indigo very much. And hopefully you've just had a wonderful week of starting your plants, getting settled in, and now we can start to really talk about taking care of them and what it is we're actually doing all together here. So the first thing I want to point out is uh, we can start to talk about this spray bottle which came in your kit. This is a fish emulsion fertilizer, which is a natural fertilizer that's very rich in nitrogen. The plants are really nitrogen hungry. So um, the best thing to do with fish emulsion is to spray this early in the morning, which is not my favorite time, or late at night, uh, or in the evening rather, you don't want to do what I'm about to do, which is spray the fish emulsion in direct sunlight, just because the sun will burn it off and it won't have time for the nutrients to actually be absorbed into the leaves. But I'm gonna go ahead and do it now anyway, just to show you all how to do it. And we're gonna apply the fish emulsion every other week. So we're starting on week two, so every even number week, we're going to spray fish emulsion on, on the leaves of our plants. So have you come a little closer here and watch kind of um, what's happening now. I'm seeing my plants look super happy. I'm already seeing that they've rooted down and they're sprouting new plants and kind of growing baby leaves. So even in the first week, I'm seeing some growth. Hopefully you are too at home. Um, it's pretty cool actually certain places where they might have been dried out you can see the leaves turn blue so that's an indication that there is blue uh, dye in there which is pretty cool so here's the fish emulsion we're gonna do a spray that's gonna saturate the leaves so that was maybe one two three five or six sprays per plant is just fine and that is all that you'll need to uh, deliver the fish emulsion to the plant the blood meal fertilizer that you used when planting, we won't use that again until harvest. So you can tuck that away. It's the spray bottle that you'll need on a more regular basis. So I'm just gonna take a few minutes now to talk a little bit more about indigo. Last week was all business, getting us in the ground and getting started. So what is indigo? Why do we love it so much? Why are we doing this all together? And uh, the answer is that indigo is the oldest known natural dye. So it was discovered 1500 years ago, probably in India, around India, and the first, uh, hence the name indigo, and the first evidence was in Egyptian tombs, evidence that we found in, as a modern civilization, and it was still the rich blue that it was, was originally when it was discovered. So that sort of tells you something about the permanence, the long lasting, and the, the deep blue hue or shade of blue. So we most commonly know indigo as the color of our denim. So it's the dye that we use to make our denim blue jeans, jackets, garments, stuff like that. And it obviously the denim industry has taken a huge surge since the industrial revolution. Denim became the symbol of the working class and its popularity skyrocketed all over the world. So it obviously was incredibly popular and incredibly in demand. And one of the reasons that it was able to be produced and mass produced and widespread that way is because actually indigo is being grown in the United States as a slavery plantation cash crop. So most people don't know about that history. Um, we are not growing the same type of indigo that was used in the United States, in the United States during slavery. That's the African strain um, grown by enslaved people in the United States at that time. We are actually growing the Japanese species. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that right now. Next week, we have a really wonderful guest, my good friend, Tony Williams, that's gonna come on and talk to us a little bit more about that history and a little bit more about the differences between the Japanese species and the African species. So the reason that we are focusing on Japanese here in, in Cleveland and not the African species is because in the area of Northeastern Ohio, our climate is most similar to Japan. So the African species just doesn't do that well here in Ohio. It's just too cold and too hot, you know, both of the extremes. So, um, so this, but the Japanese indigo does great and Japan has an unbelievable centuries old, uh, amazing tradition of growing and processing this amazing magical dye. So we have gone, all in on the traditional Japanese process and 
the way that it is still processed in Japan is by composting the natural leaves or the leaves of the plant. It's the leaf itself that carries the pigment. The stem is, does not have any of the pigment and you need a lot of leaves in order to process into the dye. So the magic number is around 400 to 450 pounds of dried indigo leaf. And that's why we need so many of you to be helping us grow this amazing plant so that we can process it more regularly and have more indigo for use in, um, in you know, the artisan culture, in the local clothing company culture, in all of these different ways. So it's a lot of work, as you can imagine. So why ha is this really how everyone's blue jeans are being produced? And the answer is no, of course not really early on um, a synthetic version of natural indigo was invented and that and that is the um, that's the dye that's dyed 99.9 percent .9 of the de of the denim globally these days all of your blue jeans were dyed with a synthetic version of the natural dye it does something similar we'll talk about the magical indigo reaction later in the season but it is made from chemicals in a chemical lab and the waste is incredibly toxic. So what's happening is as popular as we know denim is, as it's being produced around the world in countries where waste isn't regulated in the same ways it is in this country and therefore the waste from synthetic indigo is polluting so many of our world's major waterways and resources. So our mission here at Praxis is not only to teach about the history of indigo, which is incredibly important in this country, but also to teach about the environmental impact of this industry, of the dye, and how we can make better choices as consumers to have a better impact on our planet and also in our lives. And so that's why we've fallen in love with indigo. That's why we need so many of you to do this with us and grow it all together. And that's the message that we're trying to spread and promote all around natural indigo. So it just gets better. This is only the beginning. Next week, like I said, we'll talk to Tony. We're gonna keep a really, really close eye on our plants in this heat. Remember to do lots of watering um, and if you have any questions, then don't uh, don't hesitate to ask. I did receive many selfies last week of, from all of you at home, and if you haven't sent it yet, it's not too late. Please don't forget to take a picture of yourself with your plants and email it to me. Thank you all so much, and I'll see you next week.